significantly with the only example I'm going to do for multiplication and division is the fact that there is no plus or minus over there. We're just multiplying the numerators together and then at the bottom here we'll multiply the denominators and then we'll divide once you've sorted all that out. Okay, so what makes this complicated is the fact that you have a binomial as the exponent. Okay, you can follow along my steps on the right hand side. So the first thing I want to do is I want to rewrite the powers with prime bases. With 4, that's quite easy. I'm just going to rewrite it as 2 to the 2 and then bracket that and put in the power that they gave me. With 9, it's obviously 3 to the 2 and the same story there. Okay, now with 72, you might not know what its prime bases are. And to do that, you can use your fact button on your calculator. What it will spit out there is that 72 is 9 times 8, which is 3 to the 2 times 2 to the 3. And then I bracket the thing that I changed and give it its same exponent. At the bottom, we then move on to 2 to the 1 minus n, and that's already in prime base form, so there's nothing further to do. Okay, my next step is to multiply the exponents with each other, so it's going to be treated as 2 times each of those. You're almost seeing that like it is 2, or well, in fact you are seeing it like it is 2 times n plus 2, and you're treating it like you were doing basic um, distributive law in grade 9. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say 2 to the 2n, careful here, plus 4, not 2. I'm not just copying and pasting what's there, I've got to multiply it out properly. Okay, that will then be 3 to the 2n minus 2, because I'm multiplying by distributing. Okay, all of that goes over the bottom, and here... I've got to distribute the n to the 2 and to the 3, and by that I mean the exponents. Okay, so it's going to be 3, and now I'm multiplying again to the 2n times 2 to the 3n. Okay, at the bottom my 2 to the 1 minus n stays exactly the way it was given. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my last step, second last step, which is tidying up by adding and subtracting the exponents of like bases. So the way I'm going to do that, I've got exponents that are n's, so I don't actually know if they're positive or negative. So I'm going to put everything on the top. And then if I end up with something negative, I'll move it to the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to put down my 2, and I'm going to put all of its exponents out of all the ones on the top, subtract the one at the bottom, the ones at the bottom, and then... With the 3, I will do the same. Okay, so let's look really carefully now. It's easy to make little errors at this point. So 2 has this power 2n plus 4. Are there any other 2s that are bases at the top? No. So now I need to subtract the ones that are at the bottom. So I'm going to subtract the 3n. And then I'm going to subtract open brackets because it's a binomial, the 1 minus n. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply that by 3, and the top I will have is 2n minus 2, and then I need to subtract the power that's at the bottom, which is 2n. Okay, let's just tidy that up a little further. I'm going to have 2 to the 2n plus 4 minus 3n, now let's distribute this negative in, minus 1 plus n, and that is multiplied by 3. I can probably already add these up here. Look there, 2n minus 2n, so it's 3 to the negative 2. Okay, that guy's definitely going to move down, but not quite yet. Let's finish dealing with this 2. 2 to the power of 2n 
minus 3n, so that's negative n plus n. Well, right, those all cancel, and this happens quite a lot in these questions. So all the n's disappear. And what I'm left with is 4 minus 1, which is positive 3. So here I've got 2 to the 3 times 3 to the negative 2. And the only thing left to do is to move that 3 to the negative 2 down. Actually, one more step. Because it's powers of 3 and 2, I should really go and put them multiplied out. When we are working with addition and subtraction, it's like the grade 10 example where there's a plus or minus somewhere, and that is what I call a handbrake. It means you have to stop and do something else before you can do the next step, before you can do the obvious step. In this case, the thing you have to do is you have to factorize. Okay, first up, let's read the question correctly. It says, show that this thing equals that thing. Okay, this is significantly not an equation. And you'll deal with lots of this type of question in grade 11. Okay, it's not an equation. I don't get to move things over the equal sign. I have to show that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. I don't know if you've seen anything like that before, but it's definitely a really helpful, useful way to split up left-hand side and right-hand side. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to say my left-hand side equals, and now I'm just going to copy and paste what is there, and then I'm going to factorize. Okay, it does tell me here my steps to split the terms in the exponent, and that is going to be a step towards factorizing. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to say 2 to the x plus 1 is actually 2 to the x times 2 to the 1. We're doing exactly the opposite of what we did when you had to multiply these together. I'm just rewriting them as split up exponent terms. Okay, plus 3 to the 2x, nothing, 3 times 2 to the x, sorry, nothing more to do there. And now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a common factor. So something that is multiplied in this one and something that is multiplied in that one. And in doing so, I will eliminate this plus because I'll actually be able to add stuff together. Okay, hopefully you can see that 2 to the x appears in both of them. And now I need to remember my factorizing rules. I put down my common factor and then in brackets, I'm going to add, because there's a plus there, the things that are the leftover factors. So 2 to the 1 plus, all the things I did in circle, plus 3. Okay, now that is 2 to the x multiplied by 2 plus 3, which is 5. Hang on, that's exactly what I had to get. So that is actually 5 times 2 to the x, just written in a slightly different way. And that equals my right-hand side. That was the factorizing, and this was the splitting up of terms. Another way that a question that requires factorizing can be asked is this way, which is express something as a single power expression. So it's currently two terms, and we want to get it down where it's just got one thing with one power. Okay, let's see how that goes. I need to go back to my fact button or remember to use prime bases because I can't do anything with these guys as is. I can't take out a common factor because that's a base 9 and that's a base 3. So getting things in the same base is a really useful tool with exponents. It works almost every time. Sometimes it's quite useless, but here you can see there's really nothing else we can do. Okay, so this thing is the same as 3 to the 2. I bracket what I change to the power of x minus 1 plus something I can't do anything with. Okay, let's tidy this up. It's going to be 3 to the 2x minus 2. Okay, and then that is still the same thing. What now? Well, let's go back to that step we did in the previous example. We split up the exponent. So this is actually 3 to the 2x times 3 to the negative 2, and now you will immediately see that they have a common factor. There's just one little snag, possibly, maybe you've already spotted it, 
and that is that there's nothing else multiplied on this side. So what is your leftovers in brackets? Well, when you take out the whole thing, when the highest common factor is in fact one of the terms in the expression, then your leftover is a 1, and that can sometimes be confusing. So I'm taking out a 3 to the 2x. I'm left with 3 to the negative 2 plus whatever multiplies to get this back, which in this case is just 1. Remember that 1. Okay, let's tidy that up. That is 3 to the 2x. Right, what is this when it looks like something a bit more normal? It's actually 1 over 3 to the 2, right? Which is 1 over 9 plus 1. Okay, this, this answer makes me a little uncomfortable simply because it's, I'm talking about tidying up, but it doesn't turn out to be very tidy. When I add 1 ninth and 1, it's 1 over 9 plus 9 over 9, right? So that's just 10 over 9. You'll see I'm doing this in an order that might not work for you. I'm going to leave that as 10 over 9 times 3 to the 2x. Or I could have left it as 3 to the 2x times 10 over 9. This is just a format that works for when we do exponential functions later on. So that's why I've done it that way. But, you know, multiplication is multiplication. It doesn't really matter what order you do it in. And what's really significant is these guys cannot be multiplied. Ordinarily, if there was no exponent, you could multiply them, but you can't because they don't have exactly the same power and they also don't have exactly the same base. My next example is also quite tricky. Um, you've got a minus at the top and you've got a minus at the bottom and these are my little handbrakes. Okay, so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to go straight into splitting up my exponent. So I'm going to have 3 to the x times 3 to the 2 and then minus. And for my own headspace, what I tend to do is I tend to leave a nice big gap when I'm putting the minus or the plus because it reminds me that like these things are not, they're not part of the same term. That minus is actually splitting things up. Okay. And you can see the common factor there. It's going to be 3 to the x at the bottom. Let's split that up as well. And are you tempted to cancel 3 to the x, 3 to the x? You might be very tempted and you should not do that because you can't cancel over plus or minus sign and there be minus signs. Okay, 3 to the x times 3 to the negative 2. Right, so now I can factorize the top, factorize the bottom and seriously hope that something cancels. Right, I'm taking out a 3 to the x on top here. There's my common factor. And my leftovers are 3 to the 2 minus 1. Oh, we saw something like that in the previous example. It's interesting how in these questions, often this part, the leftover bracket, doesn't have any x's in it or n's or whatever my, my variable is. And it ends up being something you can actually just work out. Like that's 9 minus 1, right? Okay, so it actually turns out to be something really easy. Okay, what's on the bottom? Funnily enough, also 3 to the x. So you see it is going to cancel. The 3 to the x's are going to cancel, but not in the way that you may have wanted to do them. And this is a good time to mention that you can get the right answer in an exponents question and get no marks for it because you've done something that got you towards the right answer, but you, you completely disobeyed exponential law along the way and then we, we stop marking at some point. So just be aware that knowing that you got the right answer isn't always enough with this topic. Okay, my leftovers here are 3 to the 1 minus 3 to the negative 2. Also things that I can just go and work out. Okay, so these cancel. That's very nice. 3 to the 2 is 9. Minus 1 is 8. But what's on the bottom? That might take a little bit more thinking. We used this in the last example as well. It's 3 minus 3 to the negative 2 is, again, 1 over 3 to the 2, which is 1 over 9. So that's going to take a little bit of working out. And steps like this you really can go and do on the calculator. Okay, the baby steps, little things, uh, adding and subtracting fractions with numbers in them, that is not what we're trying to test in the exponent section. And therefore, it's perfectly acceptable to do that little baby step on the calculator. Okay, so I've got 8. At the bottom, doing this on the calculator, I get 26 over 9. And then you know what? I'm just going to type that into the calculator as well. 
and I end up with a really awkward 36 over 13. My last example on factorizing with exponents looks like it can't be done. And it's like, like no go, like what do you do with the one? Um, and there's a minus there, there's a plus there, so I can add and subtract nothing until I've done factorizing, but what am I factorizing? Okay, so this one's a, something that you're going to need to learn to recognize. And recognizing a dots, did you see it? Is going to be a really useful skill for a lot of different topics. It comes up in trig as well later on this year. So I need to see that actually this thing is a perfect square. Why is it a perfect square? It's a perfect square because it could be written, bear with me now, as 3 to the x squared, right? Or if that was a 4 or an 8 or a 6 or anything that's a, um, an even number, then it would be a perfect square, remember? Look at that. 3 to the x squared would be 3 to the x times 2, which is 2x, right? Seeing it is really the issue. And then the bottom is going to work out quite well. You'll see in a moment. Okay, so I've got to recognize that that is a difference of two squares. So what do you do with the difference of two squares when you factorize? It's two brackets. Square root of that is this, right? It's the thing which has been square rooted. The first term has been square rooted, which means it is before it got squared, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's going to be 3 to the x, and then remember that both brackets get the square root of the first term. The second term is a 1, which is also a perfect square, both of them get that. And of course the only reason it is a dot is because there's a, it's a difference, right? There's a minus, so it's a difference of two squares. And then remember we went plus and minus, or minus plus. Okay, so this works out actually so much quicker, but you, you have to see it. And that's going to be an ongoing challenge, to see a dot where you weren't expecting one. I'm going to bracket that just so you can see that I'm not cancelling over a plus or minus sign. I'm cancelling the whole thing. Okay, so my answer is just 3 to the x minus 1 it ends up being a binomial. It doesn't come to a single power expression, but that's okay. That's all I needed to do for that one.